G'day folks, I hope you are kicking butt, taking names, but more importantly, rolling dice with your partner. And that brings us to today's episode. I am super excited. I know I say that all the time, but I genuinely really super duper excited because it's a topic that I've wanted to explore for a long time. And I've seen this discussion happening on the internet for many years. They either, actually it's kind of twofold. I see people wanting to get their partner involved in their world, whether they're taking them to a GT or just kind of bringing them into, you know, painting or playing or even just discussing what Warhammer is all about. But then on the other side, there's this other side where we kind of hide our purchases. You know, we hope the mailman delivers our boxes and, you know, we don't tell the wife that we've got this secret stash or uh, what happened to me on Twitter the other day? I wasn't hiding anything. My wife never engages on my Twitter, but she saw that I posted a excited picture about buying the new dinosaur box, the Seraphon box. And she's like, oh, you bought a Stegodon, uh, not knowing that it's actually the three box uh, <laughs> and not knowing that I bought two of them. But but like a lot of people would be really shamed about that. And, you know, they try to hide their purchases. But I think for me, I really want to understand how you can war game as a couple, whether it's actually battling on the table or whether it's just bringing somebody into your world. And I've brought in probably the experts in this field it is partners of war. It is Tracy. It is Steve it is the most wholesome YouTube channel you can ever <laughs> meet. But more importantly, uh, I found some really interesting things about you both. So um, oh. today we're going to talk about war gaming as a couple. I think that's kind of the premise that I'd love to chat, but I'm going to throw it over to you both. Hello, welcome. Introduce yourself. Your first live stream. Yeah, yeah, yes, first it is. time live. So yes, it is. be patient. <laughs> yeah, there's no editing going on, so I'm going to have to mentally watch this a little bit. But um, we, we're we've been married for 30 years, been together for 31, and uh, January. We'll tell the stories in January 2018. We started. Tracy started playing Age of Sigmar, and we'll go in more detail about how it's really become an obsession of ours that we share. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. That is so cool because I think a lot of people um, are curious to know, like, how do they make that first start? How do they actually introduce their partner into their world? I know uh, I was actually going to do a skit. Um, I've been a little bit busy this weekend, but I was going to do a little skit where I said to my wife, because my, my wife is really cool. She um, She's not interested in the hobby whatsoever. She, she gives zero shits about Warhammer. <laughs> but whenever I go to a tournament, like I'm going to a tournament next weekend by myself. Um, a couple of years ago, I flew over to um, uh, England to play at a tournament. And then she flew over a week later to meet me and we went, met in Greece. And, you know, when we went to America two years ago, um, she flew home a week early so I could go to it. Well, she didn't, she flew home a week early and then I stayed an extra week in America to be at Adepticon. So she's not interested but she's also happy for me to play in that space. And um, I'm really fortunate, but I guess I know some people that don't have that. Their, their partner tells them no, or they've got to hide it. Uh, or it's something that they're just like, I don't know how to explain and bring them into this world, this weird nerdy world that um, like, like how do you do it all? So I'm very curious to unpack like your story and, and find those little nuggets, try to find out how do I bring my partner into the hobby? How do I get her from, or him or her, um, from painting to playing? How do well, I get them as my next partner? Well, we've been there. I mean, all of us gamers know that closet gamer aspect where you kind of hide yourself a little bit. We met, I was at college, she came down for a weekend. And when we went back up to her home town, uh, and I'd been a lifelong I'm, I'm 54. I bought the first player's handbook when it first came out with uh, TRS, with Dungeons and Dragons in the late 70s. I mean, I've been around this, this industry for a long time. And I meet her and I'm going out to eat with her family, with her brother and her, her father. And I'm still going, you know, when is she going to find this out about me? And Fortunately, she had grown up with a dad and brother that played D&D, &D, and they played with you somewhat also. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, yep. yep. And her little brother sat in the car, and he said, Dad, are we going to play D&D &D this winter again? And she about freaked out. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, don't embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in the corner going, yes, her dad and her little brother play. She can't judge me too harshly. 
And then I played miniature games, everything else. Tracy, we role played Vampire one time for a little bit in the uh, in the 1990s. 90s, yeah. Because you were into the vampire thing, and mm -hmm. she still is. Um, and she's excited about Soulbound a little bit from that. Oh. We'll see how that goes. And oh, then, come on, you you know, you know, like she's gonna a hundred percent all in. I've seen your collection. <laughs> I've seen your collection. There is no way you're not getting into Soulbound. <laughs> So, so black, so accurate, accurate. Accurate. Probably probably right. Yeah, you're, you're probably right. So, oh, black. Of the story. so uh, buddy of mine, I played Mordheim for years with a group of friends. Buddy of mine got me into 40K when the 8th edition came out. The boys and I started playing. We're addicted to it. And then you tell, you go from there with the story. Um. Yes. Yeah, so I got tired of getting left out of everything. All of our car conversations, all of our dinner conversations. Every time we would go visit family, we'd go by the local game store of the area and things like. And I just wander around looking um, at at various things. And I honestly was just starting to feel left out of my own family's conversation. Uh, and I could have went off and done my own thing, and that would have been fine too. Um, but we were at a game store, a local game store. They were looking at the 40k stuff and i was browsing in the in the aisle and i saw a um a bastilladon box and i said hey i like this and she was like that we don't play that we don't play that it's <laughs> not 40k that's age of sigmar and she went well if i had that army i might play and i said boys we're playing age of sigmar <laughs> Yeah, so then um, about two weeks later, I had an entire army at my house yeah. delivered by mail. And uh, the boys were vigorously putting things together so that we could play on the table for the first time. So it was really just a matter of um, me saying, well, I, I'll give it a try, you know, and, and these guys being willing to switch over to something that interested me. It's funny you say that because... Like, you never think about it. Like, you know, I imagine um, whoever is in, you know, we, we've got a, you've got a couple, right? And uh, one of them is a player or a painter. The other one isn't. And it's probably easy to assume that the other person isn't interested. And if they were interested, they would actually ask. But from your side of the fence, you know, you were able to be allowed to be unlocked. You found something and it was a matter of nurturing it and, it's in, that's that's curious. That's that's really interesting to me. It's it's, and then it goes from there. The, we set it up, gave her an easy scenario to just introduce herself, roll some dice, and what do you say about mm -hmm. it? First time you rolled, yeah. So we set up our little toys on the table. Um, they were all gray at the time, and uh, set it up. We did a five hundred point kind of deal, and I had my little war scrolls, and I knew you know, it's the basics of what it was. We moved up and we started fighting and I rolled my first set of dice and I was like, Ooh, I love this. <laughs> this is super <laughs> fun. <laughs> so it was something that just fit my personality style. And, um, I, I took to it right away. Uh, but once, once we decided that it was something we wanted to progress with, it was quite a learning curve and there was a lot of teaching and nurturing and tears <laughs> and, uh, in the growing process. And there. I think that's something over this whole show we want to come back to that if you want to get your partner involved, you have to commit to doing it for them. You don't get your partner involved so you can play more, so you don't have to hide your boxes, so you don't have to, to, to get things. Justify your purchases. To justify your purchases <laughs> or everything else. You get your partner involved for them. And that means if they want to try Warcry or Kill Team or any of the other games or anything else, try those. But if they find something they really like, reinforce that, even if it's not your first choice. Which is a perfect example of you being a 40K player and then Tracy finding Age of Sigmar and being, you know, uh, loving the Bastilladon. And it would have been easy for me to go, that's not a part of my agenda. I want you to play 40K. What about these sisters of battle? Um, and it's interesting, actually, that often, um, you know, speaking on behalf of a male, you know, and, and my wife, um, if I was to try to introduce my wife into Warhammer, I'm going to go with girly, girly stuff. I'm going to present her with Sylvaneth. I'm going to present her with uh, Murder Strippers, Daughters of Cain. I'm going to present her maybe with Stormcast with some female heads. But that's mine. That's what I perceive. And actually just going, here's a menu, choose what you might be interested in. And you've gone the dinosaurs. Um, 
I've seen on Twitter lately, there's a lot of, um, a lot of women joining with squigs or yeah. oh, they're actually one of Tracy's yeah. favorite. Yeah. It's one of her favorite. Uh, and then it goes from there. We'll start. So January, that's January, 2018. We didn't have any age of Sigmar figs. So just a little over three years ago. And if anybody does go to our YouTube channel and see the video we just posted with our current army collection, it's, we have over 20 fully painted armies and, um, uh, and Tracy had never painted before that. She's painted eighty percent of that and won several painting awards. So it doesn't. It, it doesn't. If you commit, it's not only that she can become a good player. She's become a very good painter. I mean, respected by the people we go to. It's just. It's a hobby you can join at any time and really get involved with. No, I really want to double down on that point that you make. Was that it has to be about them? It doesn't have to be about you. It's not about reinforcing your agenda it's not about hey i want to have more boys night so if i get her into the hobby um like i can go do more of what i want to do you're right i want to i want to spend more time with my partner i want to bring them with me when i go to conventions i want to it's something that i'm really passionate and excited about and i would love to introduce them into my world so they understand that part of me they're the types of things i imagine are, are what you want to lead with as opposed to I just don't want to be shameful of my hobby crack and I want to buy more and, <laughs> and I, want to make, I want to make a battle report channel. We've had a couple of times where somebody's come up and said, I gave it a try and I'm joined in because I've seen you guys playing. And that for us is about as rewarding as can be. Um, we got motivated from watching Dark Artisan, Lucy and Harry. That was Tracy watched a lot of that couple playing early on. There was a Rachel on Wargaming Online early on that played Seraphim that, mm -hmm. that we watched a yep. lot of. And that's kind of why we wanted to form this channel is we wanted to show other females and couples that they can be involved with this also. And we see a lot of wives going with their husbands to these tournaments. And we're hoping that over time they say, you know what, maybe I'll give it a try to play. Because all it takes is a couple times and you're hooked. Mm. Um, no, I love that. that. I that did just happen in a recent tournament. Somebody we've been watching her. Two years ago. Two years ago. She's been following her husband. We met him two years ago. And one of the recent tournaments was her first tournament game ever. And everybody celebrated it. Everybody yeah. was like, fantastic. Um, you know, take, well, you can put training wheels on, at least try to ride the bike. You know what I mean? And, and we'll, and everybody will try to help. And by the way, I, I just want to point this out here that, um, this show is not about getting your your wife, your girlfriend, your missus, you know, your your other half. Because when I when I put this question out, I, I ask some people, you know, what what questions they have for you guys. By the way, a lot of a lot of fanfare for you guys. You know, big love. Yeah. Um, you know, I always call this out as well. But people were saying things like about I want to get my husband involved. I want to get my boyfriend involved. So it doesn't have to be me trying to introduce a woman to the game. Actually, it works the other way around. So I think I just want to call that out. This is not just about getting more women into the hobby because there's also a big subset of women painters or women players and maybe their husband's more of a jock or a sports guy and that are like, eh, it's not for me. I'd rather watch football. So just call that out. Yeah. 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 Right. Absolutely. Um, just the, the idea of what motivated us to get started was – that I wanted to see more women playing, but by all means, just getting your partner involved really makes your whole gaming experience more fulfilling, regardless of which direction that goes. We were at Midwest Meltdown uh, tournament a couple of years ago, and that was a statement that I don't remember how it happened at the table, but there was a group of people we were all sitting around talking about having, they were saying how lucky I was. I remember the line at the one tournament, somebody said, your wife's here at the tournament with you? And I went, yeah. And he went, I don't care how you go. You've already won the tournament <laughs> in my eyes. And we started talking. We said, how do we get others into it? And we were watching some battle reports. And I said, what if we were to do battle reports to show a couple together? And everybody at the table went, I'd watch that. I'd watch that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at first we didn't want to do it because we knew we weren't going to be highly competitive battle, battle reports about and winning we weren't tournaments. we experts by any means. No so we experts. thought, well, we don't want to come across as somebody who knows, you know, all of the rules and things because we didn't at the time. And then so. we just had the thought of just show us playing and having fun. And maybe people will like that. And it's been pretty well received. No, I dig that. I dig that. And I've noticed a lot on um, on the social medias, especially during COVID, 
you know, a lot of people were locked down and the only person they could possibly play would be their children or their partner or both. And I, you know, I wonder what the impacts have been are going to be COVID because I, I was doing a webinar recently. This is more of a professional thing. And I was talking on this webinar, I was a guest speaker and I was saying that COVID while it has got a lot of negatives, has actually been really positive for organizations to adapt technology and, you know, reinvent their strategies. Then from a COVID in Warhammer point of view, because we've been locked down, the hobby has created so much joy. We've hopefully painted more armies. Our partners, we might have gotten our partners or our kids into the hobby. Once we go back into events, are we going to see more couples playing? Is there going to be a demand for more doubles tournaments? Are we going to see more kids hammer because we've gotten kids into the hobby and now they want a space to play maybe as a side event where they're, when their mums and their dads are, pl- are playing on the, the main stage. So we hope so. Yeah, we hope so. We've had a debate about bringing our two sons They're uh, um, they're in high school about what's the time to maybe bring them on the channel and have, and show them playing also. Uh, that's something we've discussed recently, maybe just breaking up into teams at first and to ease them into it. Um, but they're interested. But we yeah, don't they, want to force it they, on them. they want to do it, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tracy ran a Warhammer uh, club at her school to get kids involved before COVID started. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anything to help spread how much fun this game is. And I think that's another point that I want to pull out before I go into my next question is you're leading with the fun. Again, it's not about, you know, match play, 2,000 points. I'm going to, like, you know, I'm going to steamroll you with double more crushes charging in the first turn, and I want to, like, prove how awesome I am. It's about that experience, about having fun, and it's probably no different than a date night where it's about just enjoying each other's company. And, you know, you know, probably, I, I imagine it's probably at times, maybe not on the battle reports, that when you guys play, some of the rules are a bit more lenient. You know, some of the times you're not trying to, like, completely dominate your opponent. But it's just about having a fun, interactive experience. Yeah. It's no different for us than going to the movies, going to dinner. I mean, that is our kind of together time. Yeah, but someone in this relationship will beat the other one into the pulp on the table if they have the opportunity. I did hear about the competitive streak of a certain Tracy. Yes. Yes. I did hear about this. uh Huh? I yep. didn't hear about this. I didn't oh, hear yeah. about this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I don't okay. So <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna try to justify. I I am competitive. I am. I don't want to lose, but at the same time, it's because I want to keep getting better and it's because I want to grow with the game that I get where oh I want to do better here or I want to do better there. And and honestly. Steve's been doing this so long, he's naturally good at it that I want his mutual respect of winning some games or taking my turn at the, you know, and doing the great move kind of thing. So And I think when you've played even back to role playing games and you've lost characters and, and, and you play more time and you have a guy you build up that dies and you play tons of games, losing losing units, losing a game, it, it becomes nothing. I think Tracy's still being somewhat, it's getting easier and easier and easier as you you play more games to lose. But early on, that first game you play and you lose a big, huge unit, oh, you think the whole world's going to end. Right. And then you realize, oh, it didn't, and now we can get back to it. A couple years ago at a tournament, turn one, Steam Tank shot one of her Terrorgeist off the table. And she was just devastated. She was like, he didn't I, I think there were actually tears. It was actually they, tears. They were, yeah. <laughs> and then she turned around and won the game. Just recently, uh, about a month and a half ago in a tournament down in St. Louis, a uh, guy with KO shot almost half of her daughters off the table. And she turned First around. First turn, and- I never moved. I didn't even say boo. <laughs> <laughs> Our one son walked up to her and went, are you guys not done deploying yet? And she was like, no, they're all dead. <laughs> they're She's like, dead. Oh, just, still on <laughs> just r- rubbing, rubbing salt into the wound. You're like, oh, you guys haven't started yet. She's okay with it. And she turned around. Marathi went across the board and killed all his kids. And she, and, she, and she won. It just takes some experience and time to re- realize loss is a part of this game. But and, also, I, and also probably, uh, again, I, I'm probably making a, a representation or a general representation of an assumption, not my eternal belief, but... 
a lot of people wouldn't assume that the the female in the relationship is the competitive one. <laughs> um, most people, you know, competitiveness often is attributed to the male. And, you know, it's actually quite interesting that, you know, I don't like losing when uh, my wife is a massive sports ball player, a, a fan as well. Like we, lo- we love our rugby league. But when, when her team loses, she doesn't like it. So it's also like using that competitive nature and kind of bringing that to the table. Um, and I think to your point, nurturing um, and, and realizing that this is built over time. The experience has come over time. It's not necessarily just throwing them into the deep end and hoping they they swim. I think also when you deal with a partner who is competitive, I think that's also part of what brings them into the game. So I think it's a package yeah. deal yeah. that somebody who is is kind of passive and doesn't have that, they're probably not going to be as interested in playing a game that is about winning or losing and strategizing and you know, doing those kinds of things. So you got to kind of get both together most of the time, I would assume. Yeah. And it's obviously, you know, we often attribute the hobby being, you know, from building, painting, and then playing, I guess it also then just finding, you know, tapping what, what brings them to the hobby, whether it is the painting side and really nurturing that and, and attributing and helping as much as possible to grow that, that skill or from a playing point of view and integrating. And we all know, this hobby is um, is integrated through through life. It's there's so many things that we do in our lives that um, the hobby has a weaving pattern through it. So it's I guess it's about bringing your whole self to 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 what you love. One of the questions we've been asked, you, you brought up in the, through an email, people ask, "What's the favorite part of the hobby that we like?" Mm-hmm. Okay, and and. Now I joke, obviously, um, from my position, my favorite part of the hobby is obviously the buying part of the hobby. <laughs> we, we call it acquisition disorder. <laughs> Steve has acquisition oh, disorder. Big time. <laughs> uh, you combine that with my AD, my gaming ADD that I can't play an army more than you know two or three weekends, and I'm done with them. Uh, that leads to a lot of armies. But Tracy said that in her answer, the favorite part of the hobby for her isn't the she hates assembly we all do that i hate all that glue yeah she loves the painting she loves the playing but it's how it's become something that we talk about in car rides we we we, we hear about the meta changes and and we we know we get excited we get up early on saturdays to do that to watch the new releases oh, yes. as a family you as know? a family it is because that's, that's so awesome that is so yes. awesome <laughs> We, 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 we love the fact that we want to find two tournaments this summer on bookmark bookend weekends someplace in the country that are near to each other within driving of a week. And we're going to take a vacation out and go to the tur- well, the one tournament the one weekend, travel to the other one, see sites, take a vacation, and go to the other one as a family. It's just become something we share as a group, and that's our favorite part of the hobby. And that comes back to the integration. It's not just about I play Warhammer. It's we talk about it. We're traveling. It's a part of our vacations. It's about uh, our conversations. It's, you know, our shared experiences throughout our world. And I think this is kind of the benefit. And whether you get your partner playing at a tournament like Tracy and Steve or if you're just bringing them in so they just understand. They, they don't they don't fully understand, but they appreciate and they recognize why the hobby is so important to you, then that's a massive win. You know, the fact that, cause, cause I get a lot of people who I, I, I put on events and, or I promote events and they're like, oh, my wife won't let me go. Or, oh, um, I'm not allowed to buy this. And look, obviously budgeting and financing aside, but bringing people on the journey on why this is important and, and, Hopefully they understand it as opposed to, oh, my husband's just getting away and running off with the boys and getting drunk and, uh, you know, like, like they, they don't understand what we do. Yeah. yeah. That gets into, you know, part of the question when you talk about the finance and the money. There's no doubt, obviously, we have spent a lot of money in the last couple of years. Um, yeah. But... This is, this is a tough area to talk about. Everyone has their level of what they can afford, okay? But as long as you've got your bills paid, your investments and your retirement investments and your savings taken care of, that whole third area, I'm also a budget guy with my career and what I do. So this is something I do is money. 
that third area is your entertainment, your, your how you're enjoying life. We live in a very modest home compared to what we could based upon our salary. We drive modest cars compared to what we could. We don't go out to eat uh, at fancy places. If we don't go to movies, obviously with COVID, we didn't either and spend with the family $100 that night. We take our investment and we put it in something we know is a benefit for our entire family. We're board gamers for years before this. And in, in spending money on a board game, I would always look at it and say, if I can pay $20 to have a good night of fun with my family, then if I can get five nights out of it, a hundred dollar board game's worth it if I play it five nights and I never play it again. Because $20 to have a good sit down night with my family is worth it to me. So if you look at the whole hobby and how much we spend, I've got friends that have Harleys, have boats, and they've asked me, how much have you spent on all that stuff? And I said, well, I don't have a Harley and I don't have a boat, but I do have something that for us means so much more. Um, do we still have some guilt buying that I buy something? I go, why did I do that? I got boxes sitting back here I'm never gonna use. Yes, but it, it, this, this hobby for us is an investment. The travel, the tournament, how much we spend, the time, and it's paying off. We've been together 30 years. We're married 12 years without kids, okay? And we did a lot then, but we also led separate lives. Very much so. I did a lot of theater and coach soccer. Tracy ran. We weren't close, close. We are closer now than we've ever been because of this game. Yeah, that's awesome. That and, and, and I, I want to create the space for Tracy in a second to um, to maybe add anything to that. But I think um, people who are listening to this and, and, and maybe wanting to get closer with their partner and trying to find uh, those shared experiences, it's awesome that you found something. And it might not be Warhammer in, in your in in other people's relationships. It might be Netflix. It could be gym. You know. Um, my wife and I, uh, for a long period of time, would go to the gym together and we'd be, we would spot each other. So, um, like, that become a shared experience as opposed to I'm just going to put my headphones on and I'm going to go lift weights by myself. Right. It's finding those things that you can come together. And I think to your point, it's about understanding your what's called disposable income. Because I imagine it's hard enough for me to not buy every single Games Workshop release, but then if there's two of you, then I guess you might as well go live in a cardboard ha house because sure. you're never going like, yeah, yeah, sure. to blow all your money. Yeah, because we have the two boys too, and they're never interested in what we're interested in. They always want the death rent army. <laughs> well, it's theirs. They, they want their own. They want their own. Yeah. They don't want mom and dad's. Last weekend, we're in Indianapolis, and they pull out the door prize for the first door prize, okay? And they pull out, and they pull my name, and there's a Mega Gargan. So I grabbed that box, and the minute I walked away, I went, this is just going to cost me $500 to buy the rest of the models to fill out this army. <laughs> Which it did. <laughs> That's where I say first hits free, you know, the, 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 the say, which it did. So now we're assembling that and painting that army. Yeah. I think I just want to pause for a second and talk to the audience. If you're watching this, and I hope you are seeing a genuinely true happy couple here, and, um, and I think this is probably one of the benefits of bringing them into your world as opposed to having this, this shame pile, this thing that I'm trying to actively hide, uh, you know, uh, doing things completely independent. And it might not be the hobby. It might be something else in your life. But the more you can integrate and be honest with your, your better half or your partner or your kids and your family, I think, you know, it allows you to be more of yourself and it allows you to have a richer life. So... Uh, I just want to pause here because this has just been really wholesome and, and really nice. And just, I think a lot of people aspire to have a, a strong relationship and, and you both are proving um, to be great role models in that space. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I, I would probably ask you at this point, because I did have a question lined up for, you know, talking about maybe what, what Warhammer's brought to your relationship. We've kind of basically nailed that one. Um, but was there a, a lack of motivation bringing bringing um, one or the other into the hobby, or has there been times where like one person's motivation has lacked and the other one's kind of lifted them up? Well, I will say that for us, when we first got into this um, and we started playing, again, I think my competitive nature coming into it, I automatically wanted to do tournaments, and she was like, "I don't want to do tournaments." Mm -hmm. And uh, so we went to Gen Con 
and I watched an AOS tournament. Like I sat and watched almost all day and watched. And I said, I will never do that again. I'm never going to watch a tournament again. I want to be in the tournament. And Steve was very hesitant. He was very reluctant from his past experience and friends' past experience of going to competitions in other games. He was like, I don't know, Tracy. I they're cutthroat and you know, you're you're not gonna like it. And um, and so I actually did pull him yeah. into that aspect of it. And we love it. We because I think one reason is because the AOS community is so welcoming um, that we haven't run into any of the problems or issues that some of the other games I think can have, which I don't have experience with, but you have. Um, and but that, so yeah, hesitancy, I think yeah, I've helped I with that. I had never gone to 40K tournaments, but I'd heard people talk about them and mm. probably more in the past before eighth or whatever. And I did play another game. I went to some tournaments, not a GW tournament, and they were not positive experiences. So I was worried about that ruining it for her. But we watched some and it didn't feel that tone. And we've ne I've never regretted it. Now I look forward to it. But she brought me into that. Um, I didn't bring her into that. I would not be tournament playing if it were not for Tracy. No, that's and awesome. And wouldn't have won my uh, first one recently. So, uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> which one? Which, congratulations. Which one did you win? Indie Storm. There's about 22 players. It wasn't a huge one, but I usually don't try to bring a competitive list. I just threw a Nightmare thing together. And I'm so lack of competitive, I don't want to play that list again because it might be a little too strong. Oh, you're so nice. You're so nice. Like like some people like, <laughs> so like the I'm person play it instead. <laughs> well, the person who told me about Tracy's streak, uh, uh, main competitive streak was you know Brendan Melnick, you know the Lord of Death. Oh, and, oh. and if it, and if and and if it was Brendan who who would have won that tournament with uh, with that list, you know, double down, like just bring it to every event. And it's like, how do I make this even better? Uh, but no, Brendan's an awesome. Brendan. I said to him, I said, I don't know if I'm gonna play this list again because you know. I just don't – and he went, what? He was like, are you crazy? He was like, you're on a roll. You need to bring that again and again and again. So there's this different – I feel that's extra pressure, that now i got to bring that list and I have to perform very well. And that diminishes the potential fun for me. So we're just – it's all different people. So we've talked a lot about um, – we've talked a lot about what you both do together with the hobby – is there a part of the hobby that you do by yourself, um, or because because I because sometimes I like to go to tournaments and um, I like to go to tournaments and sometimes like I'll, I'll it's like alone time it's you know having some time away from my partner so that um, I can always be wholesome and, and bring my whole self when I'm with them. Do you separate anything, or is there a part of the hobby that you enjoy or you do by yourself? I'm gonna let. I think well, you're. She's more committed to the hobby than I am. There's no doubt. I end up doing a lot like the film editing for battle reports, and that takes a lot of time. But Tracy does more painting, and oh my gosh, every morning she's getting ready. She listens. <laughs> I'm to, listening to you, Coach. To <laughs> you or to Honest War Gamer. I mean, she listens to much more. I don't get as involved with that as she does. And then I run up and say, hey, they just said that they have a list with seven or 11 sharks in it. Sharks. <laughs> <laughs> so Tracy's on more of the – so you, you'll do some painting by yourself, and it sounds like, Steve, you'll do a bit more of the editing by yourself. Now, obviously not to say that this is your space and your space alone, but, you know, you do find some independent time in these little quadrants. Yes, we do, yes. yeah. Um, Steve has a night or a once a week D and D group, so when he's doing that, then I'm usually painting. Um, and and there's a lot of times Steve, yeah. Steve's job really does take up a lot of his time too. So I spend a lot of time at home yeah. by myself because the boys are older now and they're doing their own thing. Um, so I, that's why I have so many things painted because that's what I how I spend my time. Yeah, that's my job does take up a lot of nights at times. So, but now she's got something that she can do that. Hey, if it's a painted army, benefits me also. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You can paint some of my armies too. Um, like, <laughs> she's like I'm fast. trying. To it's amazing how fast she is. She, get, I go up there and it's like, oh, there's another unit done. Like, it takes me forever, and she just gets things done. <laughs> so good for the channel. Um, <laughs> man, get my wife painting. <laughs> 
<laughs> I even bought her. I even bought her a model. I'm like, oh, try try painting this. She's like, no. Um, well, you know, honestly, at the beginning, I could not believe this hobby took off. When when Steve first introduced <laughs> me to this, I was like, okay, let me get this right. I have to buy a box that I then have to cut all the pieces off and shave them down. Then I have to glue them all together. Then I have to paint it before I can play. How did this hobby ever get off the ground? And but now I really like the painting part. I don't know that I'll ever love the glue part. I, I don't know about that. But and I'm not good at it because those pieces, those pieces are a mess. I got like arms coming out of heads and stuff. It's, it's not good. But um, but the painting part I really have taken to. I do really like it. I will say this reminds me of why I hate going to Korean barbecue. I'm like, wait, <laughs> I need to go. I need to cut up my own meat. I need to cut up my own vegetables. I've got to cook my own vegetables. I've got to do my own hot pot. And you and I've got to pay you money to do that. To do all that. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's exactly the same. I'm like, uh, no, I'll just go to a restaurant where you do it for me and I do the enjoyable eating part. Right. Um, but it is like to what Nicole's saying in the chat here. It's really nice to see, um, you know, such a, a happy couple kind of in the hobby together. And what's been really cool is um, over the last couple of months, I've been running a lot of like one day tournaments and just bringing people back together after COVID. Cause you know, in my country we're, we're, you know, very lucky to be a little bit more ahead of the curve. And I've seen more couples, more women, more children, more people coming and are much more diverse and even a lot of newer players. So um, I love that you're introducing, you know, your, your partner and you're bringing them to this experience and they're having such a good time, which then leads to what Nicole's asked kind of a, as, a, as a question is, um, you know, you've obviously talked really positively about Age of Sigma. Have you played any other game systems? I know, Steve, you mentioned Dungeons and & Dragons and 40K in the past. You played Vampire the Masquerade. Have you played other things like Blood Bowl, Warcry, even any non-Age uh, Warhammer games like, I don't know, Saga or Bolt Action? Um, has that has that happened I, at all? I, I've played – I haven't played Saga, Bolt Action, but I was a big Malifaux players, player – um, I've got all the God tier stuff. Uh, I played Mordheim for a long time. Old Munda. My boys are playing New Munda now. Blood Bowl. Just to, the whole list have gone through. Try you with quite a few of them. Yeah, and, and I, I did. I did give Silver Tower a try. I did give uh, oh, Warcry, Warcry a try. Mordheim. Um, yes, Mordheim. I, I too much math for me, but uh, math on the fly was not not my strength. Tracy <laughs> did go to a forty k tournament with her Jakari. Yeah, I do have a fully painted Jakari army. Beautifully painted Jakari army. Um, didn't really like it, even with a new book. It's not. I just favorite. like the fantasy thing, and honestly, the smaller games. I love playing big models. I want to play the big monsters. I want to play that, you know, that cost, Marathi costs 600 points. You can't do that in a thousand point army or in a small kill team game. So that, it just didn't interest me as much, but by all means, I, you know, the, the boys, what do they have set up down? They've got Necromunda. Necromunda, they've got the, they've got the Necromunda. where they just got done making the little 3D pieces, you know, to go all over the board and stuff. So we do have a lot of other games. Yeah. Just me personally, I really prefer the AOS Plus because I'm just learning all these armies and all the rules and things, bringing on another game system kind of past my capacity, honestly. Beyond <laughs> that, we're big war, we're big board gamers. Yeah. As a family, we that's our that's our other big thing. Um, our favorite board game of all time. We have played Arcadia Quest campaign oh, so, so many, many times. times. <laughs> we love Arcadia. We love Quest. Arcadia Quest. If anybody can wants to get a family game, go find the old Kickstarter package of Arcadia Quest and buy it. It's it's we played it so many times. Um, but my favorite game is Scythe. Uh, we we we're right now we just played Raiders of the North Sea, Champions of Midgard, Reavers of Midgard. I mean we just game all the time. And yeah. um, and it's a blast. And the boys and Steve they like the video gaming too. Oh, I don't yeah. do the video gaming. Talking about the competitive side in the early 2000s I was very competitive in uh, Rainbow Six Raven, not Raven Shield, Rainbow Six Three, online, and I was in a team that competed against other teams from Europe and across and, and across the world. And we would have ladders and we would compete. I got so serious about it, I stopped having fun with the game. Mm. And I've seen that in some AOS players and 40k players too. I committed. I will never ever lose sight of the fun in something I do for entertainment ever again. 
And that's why I'm so lighthearted about winning, losing, playing. I realized that took me kind of in a dark place. And I know some people have come into a dark place in age, even Age of Sigmar. No, and, no, 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 you're right. You're right. When I early on in Age of Sigma, I, um, I, 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 I would try to play like really hard lists as best as I possibly could with my, um, with my armies. I'd never chase the meta, but I'd always be going really hard. And I got invited to the Australian masters. You know, I, 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 I went really hard on the competitive scene, but you're right. You start to lose the, the space of fun. And I kind of, at that point made the channel and it was kind of hopefully pulled me back a little bit to focus on the fun and in the on, on in the game and when I'm playing an opponent, I'm always thinking, you know, how do I make sure that I have a really good experience? Because this is potentially a watcher and it kind of keeps me on point. But there's always a competitive space as well. Like I'm a little bit like Tracy. I'm like, I don't like to lose. I don't like units being, uh, I think being lost. Is fun. I, I think that is part <laughs> of the fun. <laughs> I'm wearing this, by the way. I'm wearing this because my sports team has just won their first game. They had six losses in a row. They've just won their first game. Um, and it, it's a, a wonderful victory. And I don't like losing. And the fact that they lost six weeks in a row, I'm like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> so big rugby fan? Uh, yeah, absolutely big, big rugby league fan. So, um, yes. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's cool. But, but I want—I want, I do want to pu pull pull you up on something. And you were talking about other game systems like Necromunda, like Warcry, like Silver Towers. Tracy, you got into Age of Sigma because one, you found the Bastilladon, and you brought Steve with you. But let's say hypothetically, I was bringing my partner into the hobby, or trying to bring my partner into the hobby, and maybe we haven't gotten that far yet. Maybe my partner hasn't found the the Bastilladon in their world. What are your thoughts on maybe introducing them to the, the more board game aspect of Games Workshop, the War Cries, the Underworlds, the Kill Teams, the Blood Bowls, the Lord of the Rings? Um, is that, a, is that a, a good entry point? Or do you think things like the 40K of the Age of Sigmar, the main game, um, is a better starting point? I think it's really going to depend on the partner, where they're at. If they've never had any game experience in their past, I think you're going to have to start smaller and start slower. We had at least board games to where we had some strategies and things like that that you had to take into consideration. Um, you don't want to overwhelm them. And a big game like AOS or, um, or 40K, they can be overwhelming. Uh, I think... Also, just because they don't like one of the games doesn't mean that they're not going to like one right. of the other games. Mm -hmm. So asking them to give you true feedback about, hey, let's try this. You might like it. You might not. But regardless, don't judge all of the games based on this one. We're going to try to find something that works for you. And when once they have that interest, they say, OK, well, I liked this one better than that one. OK, well, what did you like about that? And then moving on from there, I think that is the best way to include your partner. And that's where it needs to be about them and what they're interested in. Because once once I was into AOS, I was more willing to try 40K and I was more interested in, in giving other game systems a try. I did after I started AOS, I did try Necromunda. I did try a couple of those other games. It didn't take for me, but it, at least I, I I was interested enough to give it a shot. No, I, I, li I like that because you identified quickly that fantasy was your genre, but mm -hmm. my partner might, might be more of the, the, the sci-fi. Uh, so it could be, you know, um, if they're big in their Star Wars, it might be introducing the Star Wars Legion. Um, I love, you know, Vikings and my wife and I watch Vikings all the time. And, you know, I'm always listening to like, I'm on a math and I'm on all that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with Assassin's Creed and she always watched me playing as a Viking. But, you know, if that's your thing, then maybe it's saga. Cause it's something that, you know, that sh you know, I might love 40 K, but if we love Vikings together, then work with something that is already kind of an established IP, then trying to bring them into this crazy world of Sigma or 40 K or blood bowl. And it's just like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it or it's not my thing yet. Right. Right. And there are a lot of miniature based board games that might be a good place to start. Also, we're not just talking silver tower and all those GWs, but going from, you know, 
Arca we'll bring up Arcadia Quest again or some other ones. There's plenty out there that at least have you starting that mentality. I mean, remember the first time you played something like Settlers of Catan and it was like, oh my gosh, this isn't Parcheesi or, or Risk or, or Monopoly. This is something totally different. Sometimes you got to get people into this entire different way of thinking about gaming. And it might take board games at first. And I think that helped with you also. Yes, I, I think that definitely did introduce me to the idea of it. Um, another thing is just including your partner in whatever it is that you do, inviting them. Sometimes people don't necessarily initiate the interest, but would like to be invited. Hey, do you want to go to this tournament with me? You might be bored, but you, you'd be able to walk around, look at all the other models, see what we do. Um, invite them to paint with you. Invite them to, you know, um, read the lore. You know, if they're readers and they want, you know, to understand your game a little bit more. Uh, I think sometimes we assume somebody doesn't want to know about what we do. And so we keep it to ourselves as opposed to saying, hey, would you like to try this or would you like to do this? And if you don't, that's OK. But I want you to know that I want you there. I said drop the mic there. Um, <laughs> because because I, I couldn't agree more with you. And it might take 10, 20, 50 attempts. And I always say to my wife, I'm going to go away to this tournament this weekend. Like I'm going to a tournament next weekend. I'm flying to, to Brisbane. Um, if I'm already getting the hotel, I'm like, do you want to come with me? And you don't even have to come to the Warhammer tournament. If you want to come with me and spend two days shopping, you know, chilling out, go to the beach, whatever you want to do. I've got the resource there. Like you're welcome to come. Mm -hmm. If you want to come check out the Warhammer tournament bonus points, but you know, just inviting and, and you know, she will say no, she will not say no, but there might be one day she's like, you know what? Yeah, I'd love to come. And she might have an hour, hour to kill. And she's like, Oh, I'll go see what Anthony's up to. And it's fascinating because when you shared that story, Tracy, I thought, I thought about my 3d printing world. So I've been 3D printing tournament terrain now for probably over two years. I've been scaling my tournament up to be a th you know 100 players. I now own like over 2,000 pieces of terrain. Um, absolutely ridiculous, wow. right? But because I had to travel for work often, um, and there'd be a couple of times where my print would take two or three days to print, um, I'd ask my wife, look, can you just go in and just check that it's not um, spaghetti? Sometimes when it fails, <laughs> it'll be spaghetti. Yep. Or when the yep. when the we machines that, we <laughs> perfect, so you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Or or when I'm like, look, look, when the print's over, um, can you just turn the machine off? And um, and she did. She she was helpful. But that little seed sparked a curiosity that now she'll ask me about the print. She'll ask me. She'll go in and check the 3D printer on her own. She doesn't have any interest in 3D printing. But slowly, as you've said, you've invited. You've you know you're nurturing. And there might be one day where she's like, hey, can I can I learn how to 3D print? Or, hey, I saw this thing on the internet. How do I do that? And the seed will just start to nurture and nurture. And I, I imagine our hobby, whatever it might be, that's how we start people. We just don't force them into 3D printer like, hey, here's Thingiverse. What do you want to print? It's just slowly introducing, you know, it's organic. And my wife is now asking me Warhammer questions. She still has no interest in playing no interest in painting, but she'll ask, what is that? What does it do? When I go to a tournament, she'll ask me how I went and she'll under start to understand some of the language and the lingo. And, um, she, you know, like I, I, I played at a local game store the other day and I only brought like my, my gargans. I didn't have all my kit, you know, my dice tray. And she's like, oh, how come you didn't bring all this? Like she named all a few things. It's because she's slowly learning and It doesn't, it doesn't have to, being involved doesn't mean you have to be an equal partner, just a partner, you know. And if she goes to that tournament with you and you go out to dinner with some of the guys you're playing with and she, she, she goes with you, we've seen this, that all of a sudden then they start to meet some of the people that you're gaming with and it starts to be a bigger connection. We've seen that several times. We're now, we've known spouses or significant others of people that we play with Yes. And we get to know something about their life. And I think that gets them more connected into the whole group. True, true. If they're like, hey, Susie, how are you? Or, you know, whatever. It, it, you, you feel more involved and you feel more welcome. And 
Uh, and like I said, everybody is is in the community is so welcoming. We were just talking about it's like we were going to a family reunion, whatever we're going to go to a tournament. And it's like, oh, cousin so and so is going to be there. You know, you just start knowing these yeah. people and you start looking at who's signed up and you're like, oh, I know that person. I know that person. I know that person. And that also makes you feel welcome and it makes you feel involved. Well, just you just, you just brought up Brendan. I mean, that's a guy he's seven hours old, or about four and a half, five hours away from us. You're on the other side of the world, and we all have that conversation with each other. Yeah. This is such a wonderful community. It is just such a great community. Yeah, no, it's, it's no, it, very, very, yeah, I couldn't agree more, and I'm very blessed at Age of Sigma. I can't speak on behalf of other communities. I'm sure there are a lot of other great communities, but the one we're a part of, I'm just, you know, hashtag blessed here. But... <laughs> I want to ask you, um, have you ever played a doubles tournament together? Have you actually played together on the same team? Because you're always partners at war, but are you partners <laughs> as allies or partners we, of we alliance? About We're, we said partners at peace just wouldn't have caught on. <laughs> not catchy. <laughs> because I know somebody oh, yeah, asked me. Just pap, and I'm not sure that's good. <laughs> I, I do like poor. I'm like, yeah, I like that. It's, it, it rings. But have you ever actually played together as a team? We went to the LVO, the last LVO before COVID, and um, we couldn't get, Tracy couldn't take off work to be able to go to the uh, individual tournament. So the only thing we could sign up for was the team tournament. Yep. So we went and that's that's the only, we did a practice yes. over the week beforehand with some guys to, to down in St. Louis to practice for that. But that's the only time we've ever gone to a tournament as a team. And it was fun. It was fun. It, it was, was fun. it was a good time. It was um it, it was a, a how, how was I going to say that? It was Steve's one competitive moment. Oh, that's, that's the only time I've, she's ever seen that I, I got very upset. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't upset with anybody else. We go out to Vegas and I'm playing shooty long strike crossbows because I can take them in a travel thing. You know, you're going out to Vegas and we're flying. So it was my carry on. I couldn't bring my Sylvaneth with the woods or anything else I was playing. And I left them butt out just a little bit and before they ever got to shoot one of them stone horns, stone horns came in there and killed my whole unit and I was like I, I flew all the way out to Vegas for one of my three games to completely have wasted. So it was an all ghoul game I was mad one. at it so her ghouls had to play the whole rest of the game. I was mad at myself for, for if it was a local term I wouldn't have bothered but um, that's the only that's, that's, our, no, that's only. Our, our only yeah. Ken looked at me and was like you're ticked and I was like I'm not ticked at him I'm ticked at me so how do you how do no, you no, handle no, that no, no. what how do you handle that how do you handle because someone someone uh, had raised a point with me you know, prior to this show and they're like I want to introduce my, my, my partner into the hobby but they don't like losing so I'm curious to know how do you handle the saltiness or you know Tracy I know you're probably maybe more on the competitive side than Steve but how do you handle yeah, and, and navigate the well. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying Tracy's salty I'm just saying how do you handle oh, yeah. like yeah, that yeah. competitiveness If you go back and you watch some of our battle reports there might be a moment in some of the battle reports for like 10 to 15 minutes where Tracy's not on camera and she doesn't talk that we continue to play and I'm just being jovial as can be. <laughs> and I need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's 30 years together. <laughs> if you're young and you're together, here's the advice to all the males out there. When they get like that, just go, yes, honey. And be okay. quiet. <laughs> so let me, let me speak one second on this. Okay. Because here's what I'm going to say. Gaming is a growing process and part of that process is learning how to lose and when you first start out it's learning how to lose a unit right you have to take your table your your toys and you have to put them over here and they're dead right and to you dead means permanent like they're gone and then after you play a couple times you realize oh well they're going to come back the next game it's going to be fine so then you get over that part of it well, then you get into the, all right, I know my army strategy wise, the dice were horrible. And then you get, you know, so you, it's a growing process to learn how to lose with finesse. Okay. <laughs> um, and I think if you want to bring your partner into this game, you have to understand that it is a process for them. 
and you can't take it personal when they get upset because it's not about you. It's about them. And so you please do not try to get your partner into the game and expect them to play the way you do. They, they have to learn and grow and, and process all of that emotion that comes with your, with your games. And I remember th this is an old story, but when I used to D and D with my dad and my brother, and I, I had an elven character and I, <laughs> and um, my dad was the DM and he set up this great scenario for us and we were going to kill a bugbear. And I cried through the whole thing. So I had a familiar bugbear for the rest of the time that we D and D together <laughs> because my dad didn't kill my bugbear. Um, so you have to understand where the player is in this, right? So I, I think, so yes, am I salty? Sometimes I yell at Steve and, and he has to just kind of, and I have made him turn off the camera before and say, I need a minute, okay? Because <laughs> I, I, I'm not happy right now. Um, but that's more about me. And that's, I'm learning how to do this. And I'm learning how to do it at tournaments too. So please understand when you're at a tournament and you're playing against somebody that, that sometimes their reaction is about them it's and not, not personal about to you. you. It's about them and their moment. It's not personal to you. I, I, said, I said that, you know, I said that in a, um, Steve, I'll come back to you in a second, but yep. I said that in a, um, I did a sportsman show. I was talking about like, you know, how to be a better opponent. And I, I had a self-reflection moment and, I, and I'm very aware of this, that at the end of the game, when I'm, when I'm not winning or I haven't won, I go quiet. And it's not because I'm salty or angry at my opponent. I've internalized and I'm self-reflecting. What can I do better? What did I do that caused this? And how do I stop that from happening again? And, but, but I know a lot of people, when they see me, they'll go, oh, Anthony's angry. He's salty. He's not happy. And that has nothing to do with my opponent. It's just an internal representation of how I'm analytically trying to break down and understand those decision points in order to be a better opponent. So I think to your point, understanding your your uh, your partner, understanding their triggers, um, understanding I imagine when to put your foot off the gas, when to give them the moment, and to understand you know um, what's going to help them get back on track is not just a Warhammer skill; it's a life skill. Um, it, is. It, 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 it goes beyond the game. It goes beyond the game, and that's thirty years, thirty-one years together of of being with my best friend. And that's the big thing right there, that I'm very fortunate to be sharing this hobby with my best friend. And, and Tracy and I are best friends. And we I are, but sometimes I forget and throw dice. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, I rage yeah. quit once yeah. in a while, I, but I'll rage she, quit. This is somebody that, <laughs> the exact same part of that is, Tracy's run multiple marathons. It's been a while, but used to really be into it. She ran the Marine Corps Marathon and you, you had a stress fracture to the point it showed up on an X-ray. So a broken leg, on mile 16 and finish the marathon. That's that's the type wow. of intensity. She 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 was she played she did roller derby, you know, up until four years ago. So in and I stopped because I dislocated my shoulder. You tore your rotator cuff and broke your shoulder after being hit. So Tracy's an intense person in a lot of different things, and I admire that in her, about her. I, I can exactly. see there's yeah. so much mutual respect in, in you both. Uh, and I think, again, it comes back to maybe the points right at the start of just bringing yourselves, bringing you guys closer together. Tracy, sorry, I'll let you finish your sentence. And I do, I want to, I want to pull up Nicole's question. It's a really good one too. Oh, I was just saying it's a package deal. If you're going to be with an intense person, you get the good and the bad. You just, you do. And sometimes there is. Oh, and I bad. have my level of intensity. <laughs> so there's no doubt. It's never personal. It's never personal. It's not like, screw you. I, I can't swear. Otherwise, YouTube will probably demonetize me too much. But <laughs> not not the language. But, uh, uh, but you know, Nicole, Nicole here raised a really good question, um, she, you know, mentioning that um, do you have any hobby goals as a couple for Age of Sigma? Um, you know, the, the partner, uh, so Nicole and Scott, um, Scott is obviously the partner, set goals to attend more tournaments, you know, and uh, they've been to seven, which is, uh, one and got another one coming up. So, uh, I mean, first off, that's awesome. That's incredible. Yeah, I love that you that both is. set that's up. Amazing. Do you both have goals? And do, uh, do you have any Age of Sigma goals as a couple? We haven't talked about it, but I bet you she would agree with me if I said we've got to get more content out on our YouTube channel. Yeah, 
we, we, you know, life gets in the way and uh, we don't play, we honestly don't play Age of Sigmar nearly as much as probably people would think. Yeah. We, we are, again, Steve's job is very time consuming. So when we do get time to play, sometimes you don't want to video it or sometimes you don't want to edit it and you, you just want it to be for fun. Um, so we, I, I would very much like for us to increase the amount that we put out there, but it's not going to happen if it's going to take out the fun part of it right. for us because we do it as a supplement to our AOS life, not as our AOS life. I a hundred percent. I, uh, you know, for anyone, uh, content creators, uh, yourself, myself, and everyone else who's creating Age of Sigma or Wargaming content sacrifice so much to create this content. Um, you know, like Broken Realms, um, Bellacore, which just kind of uh, was is released this weekend. It, I, it took me days to get across the book, the changes, to film, to edit that video. That's time that I'm taking away from gym, from relationship, from playing games. And... Yeah. Um, and you're right. Like, you know, could I create more videos? Absolutely. Does that turn my hobby into a job potentially? Yep. So sometimes you just got to turn off the camera. You just got to have fun. You got to forget about it. Do you want to do more? Yes. That's do the reason you... we're not, that's the reason we're not monetizing. Okay. We, 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 we could, but we've never clicked the monetize button. And there's two reasons. One, in the beginning, we just didn't want people to be faced with ads when they came to ours. And now YouTube is putting ads on ours anyway. They're monetizing. <laughs> so you think, why don't you? Internally, the minute we start talking about monetizing, we're worried it starts to mentally become a job, not just a fun hobby. Yeah. And I think we've discussed that. We're worried about that. And right now, we just like throwing stuff out there when we can get it together. I've got one I'm I'm about to get finished about how to magnetize models and put them together. I've got part of it filmed and I want to get some more small stuff like that, that together. We get asked all the time to do painting videos. And ironically, <laughs> all, we say is, all you do, all we're going to do is link the other videos we watch on YouTube of people painting, <laughs> painting. I mean, true. That's, yes, that's what yes. we do. But even if we get small stuff out, we want to get some more, more stuff out. No, do it, do it, please. Cause I think, uh, the thing that I've learned in my journey, uh, because, you know, one of the challenges that I had as a early reviewer, um, I get my book like two, because of, because of the, the, the postage differences between the UK to Australia, I get it like two or three days before it hits the shelf. And initially I didn't want to review any of this stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, everyone else has got their review out by then, you know, and because just purely by restriction, I can't get it out earlier. Um, what's the point? But actually, you'd be surprised how much the community wants to hear your opinion and your voice and your observations and takes. So I I would advise you to create your own videos, do your tutorials. I'm sure um, uh, people would love to hear Tracy's explanation and painting tutorials and tips and tricks that she's learnt. Um, and maybe maybe some advice on, on how to use dry brushing using makeup brushes without stealing your missus. <laughs> makeup brush like go buy go buy some separately i know when i bought makeup brushes my wife looked at me with like a what are you doing why those do you are, have makeup are brushes dry brushes, though. those are great dry oh, they're brushes. so good they're so good <laughs> I've, I've, I've stolen sorry tracy no no go ahead i was just gonna say when you said that whenever you do something for aos it's at the sacrifice of something else um our lives have completely changed around here like i don't have a clean house like I used to. And I rarely cook anymore because I got to paint people. All right. This is, <laughs> we used to have, before AOS, we had a rule. For, for 27 years, we had a rule. Saved our marriage early Saved on. Saved our marriage. The, and this is advice for young couples together. The entire house is hers. I get one room. And that one room was usually an office. And that office is where I could have my computer. I could play my video games. I could model, I could paint, I could do everything. And she could not come in and get upset with me if my office wasn't clean enough for her. I had one room, she had the house. Good deal. It, and it worked out well. It did. You don't mess up my house, I don't mess in your room. Now she's in my room painting all the time. Yeah, and I'm like, clean this stuff up. <laughs> so at first it was like I lost my room 
then I started to look back and I went, no, she lost the house. <laughs> I did. <laughs> we have boxes of models everywhere now. We have half assembled things everywhere. We have Amazon boxes everywhere. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous, honestly. I, but I kind of had the same. I, 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 no, that's kind of a lie. I, I've been putting sprues and shit everywhere along the house for a long time, but my <laughs> wife has recently entered my space. So my recording studio, um, she, my wife's been working part-time, well, not working part-time, but she's working a couple of days at home, a couple of days in the office, like just, you know, a bit of a flexible working. And on the days that she works at home, I give her my studio because her job requires more customer facing conversations, more meetings. So I wanted to give her the private space and then I set up, but in return, she's got this backdrop. So whenever she's <laughs> talking to clients, there's all this stuff like awards and naming heroes and painting racks and like, <laughs> so I, I get it. I get it. Um, so the, to get us back on, uh, this, is, this is funny. This is, this is, I don't know. No, this is really good. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. And um <laughs> uh, I'm learning so much about, you know, relationships and, and you know, you could take this and, and put it into um, any hobby, any aspect of life. And I think, you know, you, sure. the, the same lessons apply, but if, if you both, let's say there's the next battle report coming up and you both want to play the same army. Let's say you've got the, the deep kin army and Tracy wants to play deep kin, but Steve really wants to play his deep kin. Who gets first dibs? Oh, that's not even a question. <laughs> There's two reasons it's obviously her. One, because he loves me so much. Happy wife, happy life. That's, 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 that's just a standard. But two, I am the last person to ever lay claim to one army. I, I cannot stay with one army beyond... She, te she teases yeah. me all the time. Most people would say, hey, I have a winning army. That's what I'm going to play. Seems like, yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to stick with that. You know, you know I need to I, go do something else. I think one of the things Steve enjoys so much about the game, when we talk about what it is that you like, Steve really likes building lists. He loves combing over the books and, and saying, oh, what would this do together? Or, oh, look at these two things play off of each other and those kinds of things. Not to the competitive level, but no, just no, like no, the introductory just, level, looking at the different armies and seeing what the strengths finding are. Finding the synergies. Yes, I, yeah. I do like that. I do like that. And I always, the next army I'm going to play is going to be my favorite one all the time. So if she wants, the boys too, um, there's multiple armies the boys have that originally were going to be my armies. They said they had interest. I gave, I let them have them. Yeah. So he, he's, I'll play he's whatever. not selfish that way at all. No. And if it's my goal to get her in the hobby, then I should be giving up. Yeah. No, I dig it. It's a trade. It's a trade off. You're right. I love it. Which then kind of actually cyber dudes, um, you know, made, made an interesting question was, and it's kind of where my, my, my wife is. And um, I'm not pushing her by the way. And, and, you know, like I'm actually really happy if she doesn't, she has no interest. I'm happy for her not to get involved. It's, you know, it's whatever, whatever, uh, much like I don't want her to keep inviting me to, to every little thing that she wants to do. Like it's okay to have, independent things as well as couples things so long as you've got something in the middle ground um, for you to share but cyber dude was mentioning here um what advice would you give to convince that's an interesting word what advice would you give to convince the significant other to play with him um she supports me but simply is not uh into getting into the game I, I think it's a give and take. Is there something she would like you to do with her that you're reluctant to do? You know, um, it would be you, movies was a big one for us early on. I, you know, I wanted to see the chick flicks. You wanted to see the action movie. So we would trade off kind of thing. And, and then you learn to like the other person's, you know, genre as much as your own. So that might be, an avenue to go and say, Hey, why don't we just throw this on the table this week? And the next week you can pick date night. You can pick what we do or something like that. Um, and when you set it up, set it up, that is something that's very simple, straightforward, allows them the easy wins. I mean, not just gives it up, it allows them the, the win isn't necessarily the gain, but allows them the worst thing you can do in teaching anybody a new game is to make them confused about what's happening and have a bad experience. So set it up small, have them get the small fun. 
and, and hopefully then that makes them want to try it again and then allow them to control how far they want to go into it. Don't push them. Don't push them too much. Um, I know, I know um, I did a show, I think it was last year. It was like women in Warhammer or Warhammer women. And, you know, one of the conversation points that um, I've had, because, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about getting more women in the hobby. And I I'm saying this on behalf of, you know, the fact that my, my partner is a wife. Um, and one of the things that, you know, I, I got feedback about in the past was that an Age of Sigma game, which is about three hours long, you know, probably closer to four hours if you're trying to introduce and teach. And, you know, that four hours is a long time. And the incentive to play a game for four hours is not attractive to potentially your partner. So I think maybe my advice and uh, partners at war, correct me or add your own thoughts is looking for those 30 minute, one hour, 90 minute games and trying, and, and then maybe that's where kill team Necromunda blood bowl, um, war cry. Or just a 500 point. You don't have to go with a 2000 point army to start learning how to play the game. You know, and you also don't have to go by it with a four by six board to start playing the game. You know, just putting some some figures on the table, getting a couple of War Scrolls, two units maybe, and saying, okay, this is how you move. This is how you roll dice. That's the same experience you had with getting kids in the high school yes. to start to learn to play. When I started just at small school, scenarios with just a couple units just to learn the system, and you go from there. Yeah. Forget um, battle line. Forget, you know, match play points. Yeah, forget, absolutely. you know you know, three places of power. It could just be, you know, pulling you of a narrative, you know, I think f the feedback that I get often is the narrative side and it could be pulling a narrative scenario. Like, look, your objective is to get here in four turns or, um, I'm, you know, my wizard is going to try to sacrifice something, um, to the gods. And if you can get, if you can stop me from, from casting this spell or getting to, to me in a certain period of time, you win. And I think, you know, creating stories and introducing stories as opposed to we're fighting mm -hmm. over this objective or what is the objective or who cares? It's just an objective. Yeah, it's a penny on the table, you know. <laughs> yeah, like like if you put story behind it, um, you're more likely to get them into the world and bring the immersion. And they're like, oh, I'd love to learn more about the story. And yeah. that can be where um, the hook might come in. And I think, you know, some people, not everybody, but it's the models that do it for them too. Yeah, you know, true. letting them pick what they think would be interesting to play is is the biggest because for me that was it. That was it was the, the dinosaurs I that's saw how you that got. I to play. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't it even like I was, I was just going to say, or like, maybe something like you know, you want to play a wizard, or you want to play something with magic because you like Lord of the Rings, you know, or something like that. Yep, yeah, don't just don't just assume that you know, um, you know, if you're going to bring my wife into the hobby, it's like cool. Here are the women armies. Here's Sylvaneth. Here's uh, his female Stormcast. Here's Daughters of Cain. Uh, on your way. Which which of the three do you want to choose from? Your story was um, we're going to go into a hobby store and browse around. Steve was looking at 40k. You found the Bastilladon, mm -hmm. and it might not necessarily be the game. I think it's you know, here's the menu. What is it that you feel like? Right. Right. I, I do think that that's probably key is making sure it's something they want to do. And I, I, I like what you said about you don't want a four hour game. Even some board games can be three hours long and that can be overwhelming. So just keeping things in bite sized pieces. I think the first few times we played, we never got past turn two before we were like, OK, I'm tired. I need a break. You know, so, yeah, bite sized pieces. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. And may maybe this kind of ties in nicely. Uh, Michelle from Twitter had mentioned, you know, what were some of the things that you wish you knew before you started playing AOS? Um, I, I, I know, Steve, you are a 40K into AOS. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I think all of us wish we knew some of the boxes we were never going to put together and never. And, <laughs> or we're going to put together and paint never make the table. <laughs> oh, I never would have put Galariel together and taken the time painting her knowing how bad she is. But, uh, you know, other outside of that, things we wish we'd have known. Um, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. That is, I, I, I mean, I, it's definitely a valid question. I think it would deserve some thought. Um, 
<laughs> Honestly, I wish I would have known earlier so I could have started playing earlier. You know, I missed out on a lot of years of fun of something that I just didn't make time for. So, and maybe it wasn't the time. Maybe that wouldn't have worked, you know, 10 years ago. I don't know, but. I won't, even, I won't even go back to just AOS. Um, playing Bordheim all the way back to the early 2000s and painting, I wish I would have known to get the advice of better of good painters earlier because my painting was so mediocre up until I started watching Duncan. And it was actually one of the uh, Shadespire armies that originally Shadespire Stormcast army. I watched his video on painting the one guy and I would start using the shading and the different techniques. I got done with that guy, took it down to my friends and they went, you painted this? They were shocked. And once you just learn it, it, that was years I spent of really mediocre painting, and I look at some of my models now, and I'm embarrassed by them. That shouldn't be. Everybody should be happy with what they paint. But internally, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that that I that learn from others. Uh, I think that's one thing that I wish I'd known about wargaming from the very beginning. I think in fairness, like Steve, you and I are cut from the same cloth that we started. Well, at least I started in the 90s where um, I had no idea what a primer was. And the only way that you learned how to paint was how to paint Citadel miniatures, uh, which was a book. There was no, there was no DVDs. There's no videos. It was literally a book with just like step by step guides. You know, we used chestnut ink, and I had no idea I could thin oh. down inks or thin down paints. Um, I never understood the importance of a primer. I never understood how to magnetize. So all of those metal miniatures, I used probably an industrial amount of super glue to glue a Carnifex <laughs> together. Um, <laughs> And like, you know what I mean? Like the hobbies become yeah. so more accessible yeah. and so more informative that um, there are so many content creators, male, female, kids uh, from all over different countries and so many different languages. It has become way more accessible and so much easier. And I think that's also where it's easier to introduce someone if you can put on a battle report like yours to find um, a, a, a painting tutorial that, um, there's, you know, Juan Julio, for example, I'm, I'm obsessed with him at the moment because he does high end contrast painting. So if you're, if your partner's not interested in the painting, you could find the contrast method and find someone that is doing it really well. I wish I'd have known that about magnetizing. So I wouldn't have four bloodthirsters with the wings attached. It would be a lot easier to travel them if I'd have magnetized those wings on that, that, that but that's just something you learn. Um, I have regrets with their deep seated regrets. <laughs> I, I, I wish I'd, I, I wish I'd uh, tried an airbrush earlier. And when I did, no. all I did was focus on like priming um, as opposed to actually learning how to airbrush. So like, it's, it's, it's a learning process and it's cool that you both can learn together. Let alone learn as a family. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> if, if you could only keep one of your armies, <laughs> and I, I, or, or maybe, maybe, maybe I won't like make you cut off all your children, and you know, because you, you do have a massive collection. <laughs> if, if you could only collect one army ongoing, um, which one would it be from this point? This is so unfair for me. You can answer first. <laughs> okay, so. We we talked about this and we have cheat answers that that would get us where we wanted to be, but they're my maybe not the best answer. So we we thought about cities because you can bring in so many of the other things. So that that's a cheating a answer. Cheat answer. A cheat answer <laughs> that is such a, and well, mine, yeah, but, Skaven. Mine is Skaven. I could play multiple different armies out of the Skaven book and not get bored. So, well, I mean, if, we, if we're cheating, you might as well say, I'm going to pick Grand Alliance Chaos and I'm going to pick Grand Alliance <laughs> Order. That's my so army. If, if I had to choose one that I just really like playing the army is, and I'm, I, and I'm still holding out for some love from GW, I would play Gloom Spike Gits because I want those spiders like nobody's business. I love my spiders, but they're, they're, I never yeah. play them. Oh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really hoping that eventually I'm going to get to play those guys and uh, and I, do well. I, I have I've changed my mind on this question five times since you asked it. <laughs> I, I I don't know if you only one. 
oh, maybe I would probably have to come back. Slaves is even somewhat of a cheating answer because there's a lot of difference in there, but not as much as Skaven or, or Cities. But maybe Sylvaneth, once again, just because it fits my moving shenanigans play style the best. Uh, I like being able to have board control and move things around and keep you guessing where I'm going to come from. And for the, it, you got to match your play style. And that's what matched with the Eidneth build that I had that I just brought in, really match my play style also. But Eidneth's model range is so limited, I wouldn't want to be stuck to them. Sylvaneth was probably where I'd go. No, I like it. I think I'd, I would choose uh, Cities, uh, not because it's a cheating answer. It's because I played the Empire back from like 4th edition, 3rd edition, and I played Empire for like 15 years nonstop. So um, I, I love the... Um, I love the playing the the normal human craziness and cities is just like exploded. But now um, you said F FECs one you might consider also. I I do I I went through a term where I played FEC for a long time when I left my gloom, gloom spite because I wanted to be a little bit more competitive and I went with FEC and I will tell you that FEC has a uh, <laughs> it has an addiction to it to the bring back models when things are dead, they're going to come back. And that was really hard to leave that because then now that I play DOK again and I'm like, what do you mean the witches are dead? They're not coming back, <laughs> you know? So um, I do like FEC as well um, for that component of it. I like being able to bring back my models throughout the game. I imagine it. I imagine as somebody who's introducing their partner to the hobby, that type of forgivingness would probably be really powerful. You know, whether it's like your spooky ghost, whether it's your your demons, whether it's your your ghouls, being able to regenerate so the the loss doesn't feel nearly as bad, and you've almost like instilling hope. You're like, well, they're dead, but they'll come back. You're like, oh. And that gets back to the first question. FEC originally was bought for me. Mm -hmm. That was absolutely. I was going to go FEC. And Tracy was playing Gloom Spite and DOK and at tournaments getting frustrated about them all dying. And I went, well, why don't you give FEC a chance? You're gonna you're gonna be much more durable. You're gonna be able to bring models back, and you couldn't get over the looks at first. Yeah, I, I refused to take the book anywhere because of that horrible picture on the front that is just very bloody and gory and stuff. And it wasn't a book I wanted to carry around like to school. So you right, were you were like, I don't want to play them. And I said, give them a try. Yeah. You played them the one time, and you went, okay, I'm hooked. Well, I'm and hooked. we did when we painted our models. When we chose to paint that army, we didn't go with the blood and the gore kind of aesthetic to it because that wasn't appealing to me. So that that is something to also take into consideration when you're getting your partner into it. You know, maybe it would be a good army for them if it looked a little different or was painted. Like all my squigs are Skittles colors, you know, they're all bright and, they're and colorful. And, you know, so maybe it's something that giving your partner the freedom to make them their own. Yes. Will be something that will get them more interested in it as well. Also, let your partner find their own play style. We got Sylvaneth for Tracy. Yes. And she played them in the battle report. She's playing them and that we did with Sylvaneth. And you didn't like all the movement stuff and everything else. It wasn't kind of straightforward enough for you at the time when right. you were that level of playing. And so you didn't want to play them. And that's when I. Yeah, the whole painting, bouncing so from wood to wood and knowing how to set up for the charge and doing all of that stuff, it was too much for me at the time wasn't really my play style, still probably isn't my play style. Um, so that's something too, is that as you're coaching your partner along in the game, trying to help them find their play style and the armies that will better fit their play style. Um, doing one that has, you know, a lot of, you know, I don't know, uh, movement shenanigans is what you call it. Um, it doesn't fit me. It, it really doesn't. And I ended up not enjoying the Sylvanath as much as Steve did. I think, I think another point, I, I just want to unpack something that you've said um, and I want to double down on it. When I look at a blood letter, for example, blood letter is red. A pink horror is pink. A brimstone horror is blue. Nurgle is green. These are facts that are universally true, no matter who I speak to. <laughs> But if my partner wants to paint, paint a blood letter pink or blue or yellow, it's not my job to rein them back there. Actually, a blood letter is red. You need to paint it red. Like, let them do That's their own cool. hobby. Like, yeah. if they have an idea and they want to do something, I know, like, 
uh, you know, a good friend of the channel, Liam, um, who's, you know, who's a, you know, a very good friend of mine, loves loves Pokemon. And if he wants to integrate Pokemon, like I've got a friend, Hayden, who wants to have like a IDK turtle with some cannons on the back to be like Blastoids. If he wants to Pokemon or anime his hobby, who am I to judge? Like let them do what they want to do and, and it might not fit your law. It might not be, you know, like Stormcast and you want to put uh, – skulls on their heads and, and like you know you feel it looks weird doesn't matter let them do it let them go we went let early on to a 40k tournament and there was a lady there who was playing um nurgle and she had all the drones painted like butterflies and it was amazing i loved it i i just absolutely loved her army and then i saw what nurgle really looks like and i was like oh i don't like that you know but i did like her army that was really cool so yeah, you got to be able to do your own thing. No, I love it. I love it. And yeah, you know, like Bellacore, like paint it however you want to paint it. Uh, do what you want to do. I think it's your hobby. Um, and I think, you know, like someone has an idea. I think I think the point of this, is this whole show is nurture. I think it's nurture. Mm -hmm. It's coming from a place of inclusion and bringing them on the journey and not forcing my opinions, my ideas um, my game, again, going back to right at the start, Steve was a 40K player. Tracy found Age of Sigma through the Bastilladon. It would have been easy for Steve to go, hey, Tracy, we don't play that game. Come over here and let's look at a, a, a space figurine that you like and say, no, I want the, I want the Bastilladon. Um, Steve, you know, followed, followed, and together you found Age of Sigma. We, when we were talking about what was the theme for us, it was just that. Um, I said, you need to understand that you're wanting your partner to get into this for you both, for your partnership, not for you. You're really wanting to, them to get in for them, which then is for you as a team. But if you ever want to get somebody in really at that deep reasoning for you and your own benefit, to have somebody who you can spend more money on the stuff or to have somebody you can play with, but it's not about you playing with them, well, then it's not going to work. Um, I, I'm so lucky to have been able to have Tracy come into this and we can share this together. Uh, and it's not even like years ago when Tracy was a runner, she used to yank me out of bed on Saturday mornings to go run five K's and I did it and I begrudgingly went and I never bought into it. Then it ended up that in Orlando, we got a free trip, trip to Tokyo to, to represent Orlando at the Tokyo Half Marathon because we went every week. And I was like, what a great idea I had. No, but um, <laughs> but it's not that thing. I don't care. She's not begrudging into this. I'm wanting her to love it. And that's what makes it so special. Yeah, I, th I, think, the, I think the key there is intent. It's yeah. the intent. My intent of bringing my partner into the hobby is not for selfish reasons. It's actually to find that shared experience, to find more time, to to bring them with my with me on tournaments, to introduce them to my world, to something that I really love and I'm passionate about and I'd love to, sh to hopefully find them a hobby that they will enjoy as much as I like my hobby. So whatever that intent is, um, I think that's going to play a huge part of your success in getting them into the hobby. Um, one thing that when when we were in the top in the car talking, we said you have to meet your partner where they are, yeah. you know, wherever they are in the in their idea of the game or their idea of the hobby, and then work from there. You can't just assume they're coming in with you know your level of knowledge or or even interest. You have to meet them where they are, and then you have to nurture, like you said, from that point. Well, you had you had a, you had a background of Dungeons and Dragons um, and Vampire the Masquerade, so you had a reference point that you build upon. And for some people, it might be Lord of the Rings, it might be mm -hmm. Game of Thrones, uh, it could be these pop culture moments where you can then find some synergy to go right. Well, let's let's Game of Thrones at the army, or you know, you could be talking about you know Bria of Tarth and going cool. Well, we got these stormcasts and kind of connecting the dots a little bit. Sure. Um, sure. To something or head swapping to get Viking heads and going to find like a third party miniature company to Viking esque something they really love and having Lagatha and having your shield maidens in there or the Dark Earth War Queen. You could really build upon um, something outside the hobby to, to, as you said, where they're at 
to lead right. them to hopefully where you want them to be. And I think don't underestimate the power of just having your community. Once your partner is involved in your community, I see this all the time at school as a high school teacher. I'll have people, <laughs> I had a girl tell me the other day, yeah, I'm on the swim team, but I hate to swim. And I'm like, well, then why are you on the swim team? And she said, because I like hanging out with my friends, right? So I swim so that I can do that with my friends. And bringing your partner to the game store with you to you know, talk game or to play, watch a game played or something like that. And as they get to meet the other people who are in your community, sometimes that will bring them in just because they want to be around those people and they want to be involved in the conversation with you. And that may spur on a little bit more interest too. Because I will say, once I started playing here at home, I don't know that I would still be playing today if it was just still the four of us, right? Just playing the same thing over and over and over again. It is our community that keeps me excited about the game. It really is. And that might be a way to include your your spouse or your partner as well. Just today, we found out one of the guys uh, in St. Louis, he, he has to, he's in the military, he has to tra he has transfer. And I let Tracy know, I said, this guy, I'm not going to say his name, it, out of privacy for him, he has to transfer and leave. And she went, Oh, she went, gonna oh miss one, him. I'm going to miss him. And two, then she was like, is the girl that he's been dating going to go with him? <laughs> so, so there was this whole thing. She doesn't play. She just comes to a tournament every once in a while, but we get to know everybody so much that, that, that it becomes right. something bigger than the game. Right. right. Yeah. No, that, and you're right. Like the, the people make any hobby. It's the community it makes it. So any way you can, again, integrate introduce them to people realize that the miniatures is just a, a vehicle or a catalyst to something greater and you know yes. um uh you know like, that's great awesome i love it i love it i love it so much this is so wholesome it's so nice um and i put out I put out a call out to the chat for any final questions i've got a couple i've got a couple kind okay. of burning questions that i want to kind of wrap it burning around questions. Uh, not, not like burning like just like some things that i really want to ask but chat you got like 30 seconds to punch out some final questions if you have any final questions but one thing i kind of like sidetrack for a second because you've got kids um and uh tracy you're a teacher as well you've mentioned that i'm not doxing you or anything but <laughs> how have you found Warhammer and competitive Warhammer, whether it's win losers or whether it's failure and feedback or you know whatever it might be, how have you found Warhammer as an educational tool? Uh, actually, Tracy, we we might need to do an episode of like I wanted to do a I wanted to do an episode about like the school leagues and and kids hammer. Then maybe there's another episode in this later on. <laughs> maybe how have how have you found introducing to the ki kids the hobby? Was there a certain age? Was there certain things that you would do? Um, how have you used it as an educational tool? Like what's the, how do they, how do they connect? Well, I will, I, I'll, I'll say that I think as a teacher, part of your job is not just teaching your material, right? I'm, I'm not just teaching business and computers. I'm, I'm teaching people how to become adults, right? And so I try to share as much of my adult life with my students as, you, you know, is appropriate. Um, and I often talk about my hobby in class and I have several of my students who subscribe to the channel and watch the videos and things like that. So um, it isn't something that they don't know about. So when I wanted to bring it to school, I was thinking about the kids who aren't in sports. I was thinking about those kids who don't really have a club or organization not based on sports. So I wanted to bring that to them. And when I when I brought it up, um, it, I got actually a, go, a core group of kids right on that first week that stuck with it for probably the two and two years or so, two and a half years that we did it. We didn't do it this year at all for COVID. Um, plus I started coaching chess. So that made it, you know, we, we had a conflict there. Um, but anyway, um, it, I think that sportsmanship is it. You know, that's funny coming from me, but um, sportsmanship, <laughs> <Just about sports. laughs> being a good sportsman is definitely a life lesson. Um, understanding that sometimes you have to work outside your comfort zone. Um, I do have one player who, who plays and every time she plays, she's like, well, I just don't know what to do. And she has like analysis paralysis kind of thing. And we work through that. 
And I think it's the same feeling as coaching a sport in terms of you get to watch the kids grow and learn how to overcome challenges and things that they're insecure about and become good at something. Um, and also, I just like giving them a, a glimpse of other options to do in their life. It doesn't always have to be, you know, uh, uh, my school is very, you know, sports oriented. It doesn't always have to be, you know, a football game on the weekend, or it doesn't always have to be, um, you know, the baseball team. Uh, if you're not into that thing, that's okay too. There's this other thing. So that's, that's really what I enjoyed doing the most about that is giving those kids a place that they could go and do something that they were interested in that might be a little off the beaten path. One thing, one thing I do like as well is the ability to uh, get them away from screen time just a little bit with something that is not like get off your computer, but actually something that is a, a viable alternative as opposed to a punishment. So not that I have kids, but the incentive of, you know, I, I play a lot of video games. So, but when I don't want to play video games, when I want to like, for example, I'll, um, I probably should have raised this a lot earlier, but um I don't have a I, I have I have a hobby den like Steve well had, um, <laughs> but I don't but I but I don't paint I don't paint by myself in my den. Um, I paint in the lounge room and I hobby with my wife and my dog. So while my wife is watching the latest crime drama uh, and my dog is trying to you know get a treat from me, I will paint in the lounge room. Now. I don't have the optimal lighting in, in the lounge room. Um, and at nighttime when my wife is watching television, I don't want to have the, 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 the lounge room light on. So I'll always try to find these times where I can hobby in the lounge room together and not be separated with her. So even though, she, you, know what, you, can't, you know what I mean? Like I'm kind mm -hmm. of doing it with mm -hmm. her, but not with her. She's there. Right. But right. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. 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 I crochet. And a lot of times when we're sitting and watching TV, I'm crocheting at the same time, you know, um, whipping out a blanket or two, yep. and, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, just being together is fun. And then you get that conversation of, oh, what are you working on? Oh, this model for this. Oh, really? How is that going? Oh, yeah, I really like it, you know. And even if it's just that little initial back and forth, it can really spark some, some common ground. I'll show my wife my miniatures like as I'm painting and I'm like, oh, look this, look at this, check it out. And it's like slowly, again, I, again, my, my intention is not to bring to the hobby. It's just like I'm showing her like this is what I'm doing. And and she'll ask like, oh, why why, why are your gargans blue? Or, you know, I re how did you do that? And it's just, yeah, it's just super fascinating. It's just nurture the seed as it grows. And, and you know, you might plant a seed thinking it's going to be an apple tree, but it actually turns into a lime tree. And maybe they really enjoy just painting. That's all they want to do. I think that's do. a really good point too, is that I don't think you can put an expectation on your partner. I think you can invite, you can open up, but honestly, if you are disappointed by your partner's reaction, then you have to manage your expectation of that because they're only going to do what they're going to do. And if, if you aren't okay with that, then that's another issue. Um, so I think, inviting and opening up the conversation but being open to the fact that it's not for everyone just like whatever your partner is doing might not be right. for you and that's got to be okay just because i like spider-man and i bring my wife to the spider-man movie doesn't mean she is going to love spider-man she actually might like uh captain america or maybe she likes batman or maybe doesn't like comic book movies at all it's just it is what right. it is yes yes tristan asked do you paint you both are both of your armies uh, do you both paint your own armies? No. Um, extend upon that. Uh, we have one army that was half bought painted, and that was the Ideneth army. Other yeah. than that, we as we have painted everything. Uh, Tracy's probably painted about sixty-five to seventy-five percent of it. I like um, to. I, I won't say I like to do. I I tend to do the units, and Steve tends to do a lot of our bigs. Um. What a, what a great scam. What a great scam. Everyone loves to do the big heroes. <laughs> um, I mean, I have done bigs. I've done our terror guys and, and zombie dragons, and I did the Maw Crusher and things like that. But um, I just think that that works out best for us because I have more time to paint. So I can do all of the little, you know, 20, 30 guys at a time kind of thing where Steve can just kind of pick away at one big model. But plus, Steve does all the terrain. 
uh, I three D print all, of our all the train. So if you see our battle reports, all the three, all the train, I print all that. And then if we do battle report, I'll spend days editing. So yeah, so Tracy we, does that. We do so. trade off. I, I have tried editing. I did edit one of our videos. It just takes me about three times as long as it does yeah. for Steve. So it's just time sensitive. You know, you get something out. We actually did film a battle report for Daughters of Cain. And by the time we got it edited the next weekend, it was the new book was coming out. And we're like, well, that was for nothing. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. Welcome. Well, 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 to be, to be fair, and I've shared this story a few times that I got really excited about building a Sylvaneth army. I, I, I pre-ordered the Sylvaneth battle tome. I picked up over 2000 points of Sylvaneth armies and I posted a picture on, on Twitter to said, Hey, uh, you know, a little funny, like this seed has grown into an army. And then that night, uh, Warhammer previewed cities of Sigma battle tome and that army has not had a lick of paint put on it, and I just sold it. So oh. best in, best intentions don't always um, go to plan. Right. And right. based upon that second that new battle tone for Sylvaneth, that was a bad idea. <laughs> that was I was excited. I still no. I still am excited about Sylvaneth, but um, daughters. I'm of Cain, waiting for some changes to that army. That's uh, that's uh, we'll, we'll see. Let's let's make Alariel the Marathi equivalent. Let's get let's get that that you power goddess up. That absolutely let's, love that yeah let's supercharge uh alarial let's not just uh bella cora um i think she just has <laughs> a little bit of bella cora updates oh, you <laughs> yes let's get let's get her up there and ready and ready to fight i dig it <laughs> so true i mean I, I miss seeing her on the table i love um i love i love that model i took her to a three days out any question horrible <laughs> yeah I, I i would like to see her more on the table yeah. will your relationship ever know peace and that's obviously <laughs> alluding to the fact that you are partners at war um right right well and that was where our partners at peace really just didn't, just didn't we didn't think it would catch enough. um we honestly are very peaceful about our our war gaming yeah. uh very partner like uh we, actually, we were on our ba our way back from Colorado, I believe, or was it Yellowstone, when we were talking about what we were going to name our channel, our YouTube channel, uh, when we came up with Partners at War, um, and it was simply because it's war gaming. But yeah, we are we are other than those salty moments, which I admit to, uh, we are rarely at war. <laughs> I, I can honestly tell, like like you guys have so much mutual respect and love. This has been honestly almost two hours of just solid goodness. Um, I feel warm and fuzzy inside. And uh, more importantly, if you've watched this from the start or you're just tuning in late, uh, and I'd highly recommend you go to the start, you both have shared so many wonderful lessons and ideas and experience how, how Warhammer and the hobby has helped create an enriched life. And you know, if your partner doesn't get into Warhammer, it's not their thing. You try, don't, don't just don't force, don't force feed it down their throats. You know, I'm sure there's going to be something else you can find mutually together that you guys, you know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, my wife and I go to the gym often together. Um, we'll go to the football together. You know, we'll find other areas that we can do things together just because one thing doesn't work doesn't mean I shouldn't stop. But if there's enough signals that look, this is not working just you know let's let's try to find some other area lots of cool lessons to learn about even just simple little ways that tracy got into the hobby that steve um you know steve talked about being a 40k player you know didn't try to force 40k down tracy's throat found sylvaneth sorry found seraphon through the bastilladon and all the lessons along the way in the tournaments and um i've i've really learned a lot and i've thought a lot about a personal reflection on how to get more people into the hobby, whether it's my partner, whether it's my friends, whether it's my kids, a lot of cool lessons. But to bring us home, is there any hints, tips, advice, shout outs, recommendations? Channel links are below, folks. If you want to, uh, I highly recommend subscribing to Partners at War. Go do it right now. Bring us home. Um, we just get involved in the hobby as much as possible we and, and and spend time looking at if you want to look at youtube and content creator there's so many great people out there that are just selling how wonderful this game is we're lucky and we feel glad to be a part of that 
as I said, we don't monetize. We do appreciate subscribes and comments and likes, of course. It just lets us know to continue. Right. That's really all. Right. All that, that that that's all we kind of we, we and it we leads really us in a direction to. in terms of what yeah. people are interested in seeing, interested in watching. Um, you know, armies they'd like to see things like that. Um, then we know what to put on the table that people are going to actually watch and and want to want to look at. But if there's a takeaway from all from us that I think we want with people is to go out and get involved. Go to the tournament scene, not for the tournament games and the winning, just to or the local game store nights with everybody else. Find the joy and the fun in this larger community. And if it so happens your one local game store doesn't have that, don't judge everybody. You'll find it someplace else. Because the vast majority of people we've met that play Jage of Sigmar are just wonderful people that we enjoy being around. Right. I think also, um, just as a, a side note that made me think about that, um, based on what you guys were just saying, is that I think you have to also be an advocate for the game. Um, if you're always complaining about the game, if you're always talking about the lose, the loss, and how you got robbed with the dice, and how if you come back from the local game store and you're telling your partner about all these horrible things, and this person cheated, and that person, you know, just just brought a broke army, or this person did this and that, the person did that, that's also not going to make them want to play the game. So if you are a good advocate for the game in your own household and how you approach it and how you see it, that will also lend your partner to be more positive about the game. Oh, 100%. Like Steve talked about not wanting to you to go to a tournament for the first time because he had heard stories in the past of ne negative experiences. So why would Tracy want to go to a tournament when he's heard so much negativity? And, you know, Tyler's, you know, amen, like couldn't agree more with that. <laughs> it's... If you're whinging and complaining and, you know, you're just constantly talking negativity, then, of course, your partner's not going to get involved. Like, right. like, like, why would you? Like, oh, this doesn't sound very nice. I'd rather just not when get involved. When you're watching your partner on Facebook having an argument with somebody else over their stupid comment and you're, you know, you want to get your point across and your anger is coming through and your partner sees that, that's really not going to bring them on board with wanting to get involved. So I think sometimes the way that we reflect the game, it, we're, we're might not be as aware of how we're reflecting it to others. And we're partners at war, but we had another thing for, we want to be known as find the fun. You got to find the fun. That's our goal for all of us. And that's, yeah. a, that, that's a charge I would give to everybody is go out there and find the fun. Yeah. And, and, and I couldn't agree more. I think, um, you know, competitive, and I, I, and I talk about this a lot is that, I, I really enjoy the competitiveness of this game, but it's a game. By winning the next GT, by winning Adepticon, by winning LVO, Blood and Glory, whatever it might be, I'm not getting my pro card. I'm not about to quit my job and become a professional streamer and make millions of dollars on the pro circuit. Um, it is still a hobby. It's still meant to be fun. And I think uh, the way you're going to introduce your partner and your family and your friends and your kids and your dog, whatever it might be, into the hobby is through the fun element. And I think don't lose that when when it's all said and done and you're lying there on the deathbed you're not going to look look back and remember the, the uh, and fondly the titles of the tournaments or you're going to remember the people you met and Man, i wish i wish I, won, I wish i won that priority roll and turn three against right, right, i can't exactly. believe could not believe i found that have been so different. <laughs> should have used the command point to re-roll the charge yeah. um <laughs> But there's, you know, there's a lot of cool ways I think you can introduce your partners. I've seen tournaments, um, I've, I've seen a few tournaments, not a lot, but a few of them have set up like a little breakfast uh, the, the day of the tournament or on day two of the tournament for the partners or for the women or the children and create these little groups that allow you to to build the subset. The kids, like, I remember I did a tournament in 2018 and we had a side event for Kids Hammer where we had like, a couple of kids playing and it was just like their little tournament. And one thing I did at the end was I integrated the award ceremony into my award ceremony so that all the adults were cheering and clapping for the kids and they were just so pumped. Yeah, I think who would love that, right? It was just like so powerful for these kids that were under like 12, under 15, whatever it might be. Like there was like 70 odd adults just cheering them and clapping them and so much support. And I think if you think about those moments, whether it is your partner, whether it's your kids, whether it's your friends, how do you find those moments to bring the fun, yeah. to celebrate, to integrate them into the community without 
ramming it down their throats. I think that's the that's the key. I just saw Rob's comment on there. Wish I'd have remembered my triumph. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, keep, I keep, but I keep telling you. <laughs> I keep telling you, you should have got a token. And, you know, Raymond, um, Raymond, just, you know, giving you both absolute credit. You know, you guys are flipping awesome. I, um, it's just been, this has been such a pleasure. And if people want to know more, uh, you do have a YouTube channel, Partners at yeah. War. Bring us home. Like, any yeah. shout outs? Any shout outs um, you want to thank? Well, I want to thank you. Um, I, there's just so many people. I, uh, our gaming group. Our is, gaming group. Yep. Uh, we we um, the, the group out of Indy we're friends with now. The Milwaukee guys, the St. Louis guys, the Gateway Gamers. Our local game store in Springfield, Illinois, two one seven Comics and Games. If you're ever in uh, Springfield, Illinois, that's where we tend to play and where we are. New store up and coming. Great guys yep. there. Um, support your local game store. I, I know that online shopping can be quick and easy, but give that brick and mortar store. Uh, a good share, not all, but a good share of your of, of, of your purchase. They they exist for our fun. Right. And As I uh, say to people, pay where you play. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Pay where you play. Otherwise yep. you're not gonna have the space to play anymore. Yep. And uh, and and we're big fans. You'll see uh, there's so many people out there, re-rolling ones, dark artists and you guys, there's so many good YouTube places out there to to watch uh, that we enjoy watching also. Mm -hmm. No, I dig it. Thank you both for your time. This has been awesome. I've tried to wrap up the show this four times now, but you just are so much wholesome fun. And I could continue this conversation for probably many hours now. And I think, Tracy, I think you and I have a date in the near future to talk about Kids Hammer. I would love right. to talk more about how to get kids into the hobby. We've got such a uh, such a cool, cool emerging group of hobbyists and, you know, more and more people are getting in. So I think it's how do we nurture um we have a date. We have a date sometime oh. soon. So <laughs> let's tap into that. But uh, let's wrap it up. Thank you both for your time. This has been awesome. And as <laughs> always, don't forget to try up and subscribe <laughs> to Partners at War. Thank, Thank you, Tracy. So Thank, Thank you. you, Steve. Have a great night. Thanks. Bye. I hope you found that discussion valuable. If you did, give the video the old thumbs up. And if you have a comment or an insight, leave it in the comment section below. The champions over here are my AOS Coach Patreons and YouTube members. So you guys are bloody legends. Thank you for all the support. If you want to know more about the support programs, the links are below down here in the episode description, along with a link to the Discord server, so we can continue this conversation. Until next time, don't forget to name your characters and have a good one.